Welcome to another edition of the Patino Chronicles. I'm John Fanta. And today we're talking with Rick Patino, the Hall of Famer and St. John's head coach, about the Big East Conference. The Big East stacked this year with Marquette, UConn, Creighton, Villanova, and a Red Storm team that is on the rise under Patino. But this conference was founded in 1979 by Dave Gavin and has a rich history. And in a football powered world, the basketball first Big East preserves on. Here are some of Patino's best Big East tales. When I say Dave Gavin, what comes to mind? Well, Dave was a friend, a mentor. Dave was the ultimate politician, creator, innovator. Uh, he had a lot of genius with him. And he built this Big East. He also knew how to take 8, 10, 12 egos and mend them into one. Um, he was just a brilliant man. Uh, he he advised me before I took the Celtic job. And obviously, we're still playing the Gavit games, although it's uh, fallen probably to a different time, a different league. Yeah. You're at Providence College. And you talk about those meetings. In the, in the 80s, those coaches are, including yourself, larger-than-life personalities. Can you take us inside a Big East meeting room and what that looked like? Well, remember, back then, no one made big money back then. We were all making basically a, uh, if it was six figures, it was low six figures, like 100000 I was making like 90000 at Providence. A ball deal we were fighting over for $2,500, $3,500. Uh, John Thompson ran the last one that I was at, smoking a big cigar. I believe it was in Puerto Rico. Roley just came off the championship. So you had a lot of coaches in that room that had a lot of success from Jim Beheim to John mm -hmm. Thompson Sr. to Roley Massimino. I was the new kid on the block. PJ Colissimo was there as well. It was exciting times. And I remember that when the, the three-point shot came into existence, yeah. my first four Big East games, I don't think any of the schools made a three. They took one, two, or three, or four, but Roley was against it. Louie was against it. John Thompson was against it. And I was all for it because I had a slow, small team, and we were going to use that thing to get us to where we wanted to go. Coaching against Louie, you just alluded to it, his charisma. What was coaching against him like? Well, Lou has, he has the total package of a basketball coach. He's extremely intelligent with the fundamentals and strategies of our game. He's an excellent X and O man. He's great in timeouts and making changes. Great practice coach. Went almost four hours every single day. Legendary practices. But Lou had something most coaches do not have. It's an incredible dose of humility. And when you turn 60, you start to become humble. You realize that uh, you may be a decent coach and motivator and innovator, but there are a lot of guys like that out there. Lou always understood who he was and didn't get carried away with himself, as so many young coaches today do. Lou's humility separated him from most coaches. At 98, for a man to be coming to games, he was in the front row at your introductory press conference, and you've said that he has talked with you on the phone about your team. What's that like? Well, he came to one practice, and it was we were getting after it pretty hard. And I noticed he's, he went like this to me. And um, I walked over. Uh, I said, what's up? And, and Lou speaks now like the godfather. Uh, I said, what's up, Lou? He said, do you believe in water? <laughs> and I said, sure I do, coach. Oh, and I, said, I went too long without giving him a water break. Guys, wash <laughs> out. Coach wants you to get some water. <laughs> so he he's... Great to have around. He spoke to a recruit. He's uh, the more games he comes to, the more uh, brings smiles to everyone at St. John's faces. Is there a because looking at people, whether it's sport or not, 
the fact that he has the longevity is is revealing to anybody. Is that just his passion and who he is at, when you say total package? I think he, he took great care of himself. He's not someone that stays up real late. He has one glass of red wine uh, every night. Um, I would fail that test miserably. <laughs> but um, he's just taking care of himself, and he has a great love. He's a very simple man. Lou's all about family. It's all about St. John's. So Lou is a, a special man. And what again, what, what separates good to greatness is the word humility. You can't be great without it. Now, look, you may say, well, Deion Sanders could become great and he doesn't have humility. He really does have humility because he gives praise to a higher being. Uh, but he's an entertainer as well. Lou wasn't an entertainer. So there's so many different ways to win, so many different ways to recruit. Just Lou mastered all of them and uh, still to this day is very special. Taking Providence College to a Final Four. It's amazing thinking about that. And thinking about that area, that fan base, their passion for basketball, the Friars are the, the pro team in that area, as you well know. When you think about Billy Donovan and leading Providence to the promised land, what comes to mind most? Providence was always, I've been on record for years, always the most special to me. It was the most difficult of times, but also the greatest of times. Uh, we, uh, we lost a child during that time and we were as down as can be and basketball between the lines got us not to forget, but just to, to stall our memory of what just happened between the lines for two and a half hours to give us some type of solace to not think of the great tragedy that we experienced as a family. And with each the players would come up, the coaches, or anything we could say, anything we could do. I said, keep on winning. That's the therapy that we need as a family. And sure enough, we went to a Final Four. Uh, as I look back on it, whether it's Loyola, Chicago, a few years back, as I look back on my basketball team then, compared to Louisville, Kentucky, I don't quite fathom how we did it. It was sort of amazing without question from a strategic standpoint, the three-point shot was a major element in us getting there because us in Vegas led the nation in three-point shooting. And a lot of people just did not adopt it. Uh, it also helped me with the Knicks, the three-point shot uh, when we had the Bombinos. So it was something I adopted early on and it, it, it just carried us to a Final Four. In that moment, in those moments, when you look at your whole journey, how much has basketball always been the thing that you end up going back to? You know, not since, so I, I stepped away for two years uh, after I got fired from Louisville. And I, I really felt that was it for me. Uh, that was the end of coaching for me. And then I got a call from Chris Wallace, my general manager with the Celtics, and said that Panathinaikos of the EuroLeague would like to hire you. I said, sounds Greek to me, Chris. Where is that? He said, it is Greek, and it's in <laughs> Athens. And they play in the EuroLeague, which is the professional basketball league. And I said, no, I have no interest. And he told them that I had no interest. Another week went by, and my wife said to me, he said, look, this is an unhealthy way you're living. Uh, and but what she meant by that, staying up all night watching NBA games on the West Coast, consumed by watching basketball but not being in it and she saw how how unhappy and unfulfilled i was and she said you need to take that job this was christmas eve i had to get a flight from miami to newark emirates to athens and play on christmas night so that was something and then the greatest thing happened the bitterness that I had for Louisville left, completely left. I was now consumed with getting Panathinaikos to the playoffs and later became actually their national coach. And it was two years of, at 65 years of age, of learning a different brand of basketball, offensive movements, second to none. Uh, the defenses weren't great, but, but I knew that going in. And it was two years of replenishing my basketball, getting back into it with that incredible passion, 
learning, growing. So I finally came home to coach at Iona University, and they met me, the president and athletic director in Madrid, Spain. We were playing Real Madrid. And if I didn't take that job that night, I had about 48 hours to get to London to get home because COVID hit. And they were only letting people in from London. So I, I took the job, obviously, and, and uh, glad I did. Learned a lot from Greece, had a great run at Iona, and uh, it brought me to St. John's. 